If I get arrested for DUI and I have a young child in the car, I'm going to be separated. When I was a police officer in New York and I arrested a father for domestic violence, I separated that Mr. father Holman, from his family. Mr. Holman, with all due respect, legal asylees are not charged with any crime. When you're in the country illegally, it's violation 8 United States Code 1325. Seeking asylum is legal. If you want to seek asylum, you go through the port of entry, do it the legal way. The Attorney General of the United States has made that clear. So Donald Trump just appointed his former ICE director Tom Holland to oversee US border control. That is good news because I actually watched this guy's interview with Ocasio Ocotez. The video, the debate was very, very good and enjoying to watch. This guy is very straightforward. He doesn't mess around and I am sure this guy is going to hit the ground running on day one. So I like this guy. I want us to watch this interview with him together let's watch and um, i'll give you guys my take zero tolerance was interpreted as the policy that separated children from their if parents. i get arrested for dui and i have a young child in the car i'm gonna be separated when i was a police officer in new york and i arrested a father for domestic violence yes i separated that mr father from Holman, with all due respect it's right it's right legal asylees are not charged with any crime what when you're in the country illegally, it's violation 8 United States Code 1325. Seeking asylum is legal. If you want to seek asylum, you go through the port of entry, do it the legal way. Very true. The Attorney General of the United States has made that clear. This guy, this you, guy Chair, doesn't mess around. Uh, earlier, my colleague from around. Maryland, Mr. Raskin, She's asked the panel how many people here believe that child separation is an effective policy in deterrence. <laughs> and no one on the panel raised their hand. She can, she can I just wanted to note that for the record, Mr. Chair. I, I wanted to ask a question from Professor um, Mukherjee. Is the United States violating or violated human rights about? agreements set by the United Nations in a family separation policy? What? Yes. What? International law is clear that family unity should be prioritized. Wow. So we, as members of the United Nations, signed on what? into an international human rights agreement saying very clearly that family separation is a violation of international human rights, and then we pursued a policy that wow. violates human wow. rights. Wow. Wow. This is America. This is not the United Nations or whatsoever. Even though, let me just say truly, even though I am not an American or whatsoever, but was whatsoever happens in America will affect the whole world. Look at the price of Bitcoin. Look at the economy. Listen, if America falls or fails, the whole world will be affected. This woman is kind of, I don't want to use the word dumb, but like, what is she saying? Like, you are, when you arrest someone, especially someone who's evil you separate them from their child you have to separate them from their kid that is what happens like how can you endanger your child you take your child from your home and you are traveling with your child coming to the border which is risky you travel on your foot or whatever you use and you are coming to america with a child do you know how many people die on their way coming and you are coming with a child that is risky that is risky that is a parent that cares less about their child you don't love your child you are a heartless parent you are a careless parent and yes that child deserves to be taken away from that parent because how can you take that risky dangerous journey just coming to America illegally illegally that is wrong and I don't know why this woman is trying to defend that evil way that evil act do you really think this Democrat people love children no they don't love kids because these are the same people who talk about loving kids and all of that but yet still they are the ones promoting abortion on demand. Promoting, oh, kill your, I mean, abort your child is freedom, yip, 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 on their own. 
Larry and I mean their own Larrys and their um, their own um, campaigns. They were promoting abortion on demand. Why Kamala Harris was giving a, a speech on stage? There was a boss outside offering ladies, women abortion. That means on her on the ground of campaign, they were busy outside aborting children, killing babies. To tell you how wicked these people are, they don't really care about children. She's just faking it. She's a fake. Let's continue. Let's continue, guys. Um, you know, Mr. Chair, I was looking. How did we get to this point? Wow. How did we get to this point where we take children out of mothers' and fathers' arms? Wow, imagine. And, uh, you know, it, it dated back family separation the way that we have seen it, where we take children away from their parents without due process. Wow began last year under Secretary Kirsten Nielsen, but I had to dig further, and our staff dug further. But where did this start within the administration? She implemented it, and we found a memo. Dates back to April 23rd of 2018, where there was an official recommendation to, quote, pursue prosecution of all amenable adults who cross our border, quote, illegally, even though this applied to legal <laughs> asylum se seekers in practice. You have to understand that this is the same party that promotes that a boy can become a girl and a girl can become, a, I mean, a boy and all of that. And they promote puberty blockers to children. So these people don't really care about children. They don't really care about your children. They don't really care about the children crossing the border. They are fake. So you guys, you have to be very careful what this um, whatsoever is telling you. This lady is just, is just a fake. They don't really like you guys. They don't really love children as they claim they love them. It's a lie. It's a lie. Let's continue. Including those presenting with a family unit between ports of entry in coordination with DOJ. Here is the memo that I would like to submit to the congressional record. What is the name of that? It is the memo, memorandum for the secretary um, from Homeland Security. Date. April 23rd, 2018, subject increasing prosecutions of immigration violations. Without objection. Wow. And so I looked at this memo and it seems like this is the source of it. <laughs> and it seems as though Mr. Lady, Holman, that you are the author. This lady is living in La La Land. It says La here Land. from She's yourself, She's delusional. Kevin Michalinen and Francis <laughs> Cisna. Is this correct? Did you sign the memo? And these types of women make other women look somehow like... I'd be happy to provide it. You, go, you are going um, against the U.S. Constitution. And we'll provide it over. But I would like to note that here it says the official recommendation there were three different options presented. The third included the option for family separation. This initiative would pursue prosecution of all amenable adults, including what? those presenting with a family unit. What? You are talking about people, parents, who choose to risk their children's life and bring them to the border, risking their health, risking their life, endangering their their future and you brought them to the border taking that risky journey that people literally die and you are trying to defend such people that oh we should arrest them and keep them with their children no we should arrest them and send them back to their country well the best way america can help other country is to help go there and help them strive in their own country okay Okay, America should go to those countries and help them strive, help their economy. People should not, every, it's not everybody that will go to America. You know, people going to America will even increase corruption because most of the corrupt people, they steal money and they send their, their children to, to America or they steal money and go spend in America. And America should also do make researches on those stuffs, on, on people who steal money and go to, to America. These corrupt politicians, they love what is happening. 
So send everybody back to their country and let them go and fix their country. Let them go and fight for their country. Let them go and fix their own countries. Let's continue. Mr. Holman, your name is on this, is this correct? Yes, I signed that memo. So you are the author of the family separation policy? I am not the author of this memo. You're not the author, but you signed the memo? Yes, a, so, zero, a zero tolerance memo. So you <laughs> provided the official recommendation to Secretary Nielsen on family, for the United States to pursue family separation? I gave Secretary Nielsen numerous recommendations on how to secure the border and save lives. But it says here that you, re you gave her numerous options, but the recommendation was option three, family but, separation. What I'm saying, this is not the only paper where we've given the Secretary numerous options to secure the border and save lives. Yes. And so the recommendation of the many that you recommended, you recommended family separation. I recommend a zero tolerance. Yes. Which includes <laughs> family separation. Yes. The same as is whenever you a citizen parent gets arrested when they're with a child. Very true. These are dangerous parents and dangerous Zero their tolerance was their interpreted as the policy that separated children from their If parents. I get arrested for DUI and I have a young child in a car, I'm going to be mm. separated. When I was a police officer in New York and I arrested a father for domestic violence, yes. I separated that Mr. father Holman, from his family. Mr. Holman, with all due respect, He's right. Shut legal up. asylees are not charged with any crime. What? When you're in the country illegally, it's violation 8 United States Code 1325. Oh. Seeking asylum is legal. If you want to seek asylum, go through the port of entry, do it the legal way. Yes! The Attorney General of the United States has made that clear. Okay. He's right, you Mr. can't Chair, get this the, guy. The, the memo is, um, is submitted to- You can't get this guy, he knows the law, he has everything to destroy these people. This evil we get people who claim, oh love is love, we love you, we love you, and they stab you in the back. He is interpreting the law, the, cons the constitution, and this lady is busy here throwing her emotions and trying to uh, manipulate everything and say, oh the UN. America is different from the UN. America is different from the UN. Get that in your brain. America is different from the UN. The UN is not America. The United Nations is not America. America is different from the UN. These children, they enter in the... This, the parents of these children are endangering their lives by making that risky dangerous journey and yes when you find a a, a child with a, a parent who who breaks the law you have to separate those children you have to separate them from the person who is breaking the law which is the right thing to do let's continue guys to the record for review uh, Inspector General Costello, one last thing. Is there a record, based on reports throughout the year and in our hearing earlier this year, there was, we spoke with Ms. Juarez, a mother who lost her child due to inhumane conditions in the facilities. Mm -hmm. We learned that there is no accurate record <laughs> and no policy being held of people who are pregnant wow. and people who endure miscarriages. Why? Uh, is there a record of who enters and leaves these facilities? First of all, like, ask yourself this question, guys. Like, you are a pregnant woman, a pregnant mother, making that dangerous journey, coming to the border. Like, these people really think very, like, I don't understand what is she talking about. Like, you are a mother making that dangerous journey. With a child in your womb and then jarring their life in the womb like why would you make that dangerous journey in the first place as a parent as a loving caring parent why would you be coming with your child with your pregnant child in the womb on the border seeking asylum the wrong way illegally that is wrong this this woman i don't know what's wrong with her life like why would you why would someone endanger their child to that point why would you do that why would a loving mother or father do that gosh let's continue guys like i'm just like i don't understand why she why she thinks the way she does like who are voting for these types of people 
like ah, man I pray she just leaves politics I'm not familiar with the instance you're talking about but I do believe the facilities keep custody logs and, and logs but where, I'm not familiar with, with the incident you're talking about and where about. would we find those records <laughs> I believe all the facilities keep them on site, okay. CBP and ICE facilities. And okay. if you believe that the records are not accessible, and or if we find that the records are not accessible, do you believe the committee should seek to request records from DHS on the location of children and and the and those that are detained? Well, we would never opine about what the committee would request and, and not request. So, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Jordan. Mr. Holman, the actions you took when you were director of ICE were entirely consistent with the law of the land, weren't they? Yes. Yes. Yes, when someone's prosecuted for a crime, the child can't go to jail with a parent. Yes. That happens to American families every day. Yes. Yeah, and if we, as you said, I think earlier, if we don't like the law, hmm. the last time I checked, it's the folks sitting up here got to change it. <laughs> yeah. And you've offered, I think, no more than four times, <laughs> three changes to the law that would help the situation. Is that right? Yes, sir. Maybe make it a fifth time. Can you say it a fifth time for this group? Just, you know, because, again, <laughs> we're the ones that have to change the law. So give us that recommendation a fifth time, the three things that we got to do. <laughs> if we would close the loopholes in the TVPRA, where children in Central America are treated the same as children in Mexico. Yes. If we would change the Flores Settlement Agreement so we can actually detain families and family setting long enough to see a judge <laughs> in either case. Very good. If we can change the rules of asylum so... It makes more sense so 90 percent of the people don't pass the first interview and a lot fewer pass in front of a judge <laughs> those three things wow would, would would mean a big would make a big difference on the border and decrease the illegal entry because those three things go to the heart of the matter they go to the incentive is that right <laughs> they go to incentive along with the other things such as talking about abolishing ice <laughs> having no detention <laughs> free education <laughs> yeah free medical care <laughs> citizenship for those who are here illegally wow when you keep offering incentives for people to come sanctuary cities come to this country you'll be protected from hmm. ice very true as long as you keep having this language those kind of more people who are vulnerable of, people are going to keep trying to come those kind of statements made by democrats in the united states congress or in hmm. positions of influence in this country they have an impact don't they they have a significant impact when a member of congress says abolish ice when another member of congress says abolish dhs when the speaker of the house says walls are immoral when the person who gave the state of the union response to the president's state of the union yes. says she's okay with non-citizens voting that all has an impact doesn't it yes just like the laws that you're you're yes. sworn to uphold and 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 uh and uh impact and do when you're the director of ice hmm. it has a significant impact and if this would have been fixed years ago we probably wouldn't have seen zero hmm. tolerance we hmm. wouldn't see the conditions on the border but today. because the laws haven't been changed because of the statements that have been made there was a crisis there is a crisis on the border and that just didn't happen yesterday very true right? you think about this there was a crisis the hmm. administration acts ask for help yes democrats say it's contrived it's manufactured it's fake it's not real <laughs> then when the crisis the real crisis gets actually worse the Democrats blame the administration for the very crisis they helped create by the things they said, and the fact sure. change the law. But yes. somehow, it's your problem. They somehow play the it's victim. The president's problem. They always play the victim. And we have Miss Costello, who went down there. Her team went down there and looked this all over. As the Inspector General. Hmm. Wow. Said there's some concerns that she has, and the cause of the concerns they're trying to ascertain. Now she also said <laughs> agents are doing. I think your your statement was agents are doing their level best. Wow. Is that right, Miss Costello? Yes. That's the ins experience of our inspectors. So the, the inspector visits. general goes down there with your team and you conclude the agents, the people that Mr. Holman used to represent are doing their darn best they can do, but they're overwhelmed. Yes. And then Too you many also people. said in your, in your statement, uh, in your uh, answers a few minutes ago, mm. you're trying to ascertain the cause. Too many people coming well, that's in. That's pretty simple to figure out the cause. Yes. It's the numbers. Yes. From in October, <laughs> 60,000 apprehensions and inadmissibles on the border. October wow. of last year. Wow. You know it was in May of this year. Wow. 144,000. You know the cause. They're all coming. Yes. And they're coming because things the other side's saying, and the fact we won't change three fundamental things in the law. And it also might help. Very Mr. true. Mr. Holman. It also might help. Yes. Because these are the ones that, these are apprehensions, these people presenting themselves at ports of entry. It also might help we build a border security wall, right? Yes. Instead of having this Speaker of the House say they're immoral, even though there's one in her state, it might actually help. Very true. If we built the border security wall that the American people voted this president in office to do, yes. it might actually help we did that. Would you agree, Mr. Holman? Absolutely. Every place they build a border barrier, 
barrier, every single place they built a border barrier, illegal immigration decreased. Yes. It would, it would help with some of the tragic things that we have heard about. Very true. Tragic situation that we've yes. heard about Very true. the last couple of days, this entire week in this Very committee, true. Very true. that no one wants to see happen. Very true. Listen, guys, listen, guys. This, there are children dying on the border. Like there are people dying, literally dying to get into America. And this is because these people are risking their lives, which is not good, which is not good. And I, just like I said, America, the best way to help other countries is to go there and help their economy. It is not saying everybody you can come to America, everybody must not go to America. Not everybody has to come. Not everybody has to come. Let's continue. The, the, the young mother who lost her daughter it's wow. tragic. Wow. No one wants those. But if we did the things you're talking about, we could help mm. avoid some of those kind of incidents from happening in the future. Is that right, Mr. Homan? Yes. Yeah, if I can respond. And to you're that. the guy. You're the guy who has lived it, breathed it, felt it, managed it. Yes. You know more than you. You have more expertise in this area than anyone in this room. Is that right? Very true. I believe so. But let me I respond. So. Let me respond to the one child that died. It's tragic. Tragic. Wow. It sure is. But, but you know, as long as we're showing a lot of pictures, if I can have just 30 seconds, here's a picture. Wow. Wow. Her name is Serenity. Wow. She was nine months years, nine months old, nine months. Wow. Nine raped months. and murdered by an illegal alien because of open borders policy. Wow. Here's Irana. She was five years old. Wow. Raped repeatedly and murdered by an illegal alien. She'll... Here's Louise Solowin. Oh. She was 93. Mo uh, multiple rapes and murdered oh. by an illegal alien. Wow. Here's a 16 year old. Here's a law enforcement officer. I got hundreds of these in my desk drawer. Wow. So I, I've seen tears for people today, and I, I understand wow. that it's tragic when anybody dies. But let's wow. not remember, let's not forget the angel mom and dad who I've all met and got to know. Their children have died and they're separated forever. Wow. wow. It's not a matter of location. Wow. They're dead. Wow. Wow. And a secure border would help prevent some of this. Wow. Sanctuary cities does not help this. Sanctuary cities will have, this will increase because wow. of. The, the, the push of sanctuary cities, come to our country, we'll protect you. You can even commit a crime, be in our county jail, we're not wow. going to ice into the jail. So he'll wow. go out, recidivism rates, anybody wow. can look him up. That was very sad. Like those little girls who were gripped multiple times, like five year olds. That is sad. That is sad. That is very sad, guys. Like. America, I'm glad that this guy is, has been chosen by Trump to fix everything. And um, it's a good thing that we have, he has been chosen to do the job. I will pray that things will change. That is evil. That is very, very evil. And that is wickedness. And I'm so surprised that this, nothing moves this democrats they don't even really care about it they don't care they don't care like that is a touching story and i'm going to stop the video there right there because it really, it really gave me cheers about that like not one not two not three multiple and not just once a lot of times a lot of evil people are coming on the border and if you're a loving mother or a loving father you won't put your child through that. You won't even allow your child to come through that border because evil people are on the border too. That is sad. So as a loving mother or loving father, would you do that? Would you allow your child to be, to hang around that dangerous area? This is evil. This is bad. Again, if you are watching this, Subscribe, stay tuned. I'm going to be making more videos, political videos and all of that. So please um, subscribe. I'm going to be making more videos and all of that. And uh, please, guys, this is sad. This is sad. And I'm glad that he's in. And um, I pray that God will give him strength to fix everything. Again, guys, this is a Christian channel where I talk about the word of God. I talk about i talk about jesus i talk about dating and i talk about politics so please make sure you subscribe stay tuned and um, if you want to send me a video you can my email address will be in the description below and also you can um, if you want to support the channel make sure you go support me on patreon 
this channel was demonetized by youtube so please go support me on patreon if you want to and on patreon you can send me a message there and all of that again guys this is a sad video to watch video to watch but we are glad that um homan mr homan is at the job and we pray that he's going to do his job we pray that he's going to make the amendments and fix everything in place by the grace of god again guys i love you i'm going to see you guys in the next video please make sure you subscribe stay tuned for more videos like this and i'm going to stop the video here i'm going to be making more videos and i'll see you guys in the next video and peace jesus loves you don't give up keep voting for righteousness and peace